Hello everyone, Dr. Mungli here. So in this video, I will be explaining you about essential fructosuria hereditary fructose intolerance. These are the two disorders which are associated with fructose metabolism in our body. So the deficiency of fructokinase leads to essential fructosuria and uh, deficiency of Aldolase B enzyme will lead to hereditary fructose intolerance. Now let's quickly move on to see metabolism of fructose. Fructose we get it from fruit juice, uh, uh, fruit any uh, su uh, table uh, sugar containing foods. Once we get fructose into our body, so majority of the fructose is metabolized in the liver. Predominantly fructose metabolism will be going on in the liver and partly it will be going on in other tissues. Now the fructose is converted to fructose 1-phosphate and this will be done by an enzyme called fructokinase. During this reaction ATP is consumed into, uh, uh, is going to provide phosphate to make fructose 1-phosphate and release ADP molecule. It means the terminal phosphate of ATP is in the form of fructose 1-phosphate. Now the fructose 1-phosphate undergoes further metabolism catalyzed by aldolase B enzyme. This particular enzyme is going to break down 6-carbon fructose 1-phosphate into two molecules of 3-carbon compounds and they are glyceraldehyde and dihydroxyacetone phosphate. So this is how fructose is ultimately converted into glyceraldehyde and dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde and dihydroxyacetone phosphate, these two molecules, they enter into glycolysis and further in the glycolysis, they will be diverted into pyruvate formation and then into acetyl-CoA and ultimately that acetyl-CoA gets into fatty acid synthesis, cholesterol biosynthesis and fatty acid uh, molecules can be diverted into triacylglycerol formation. So overall, when the fructose is consumed, especially under well-fed condition, fructose is going to make fatty acids, which is going into triacylglycerol formation, and it will be accumulated in adipose tissue. Now let's move on to uh, see our very first disorder, and that is essential fructosuria. Note that essential fructosuria is because of deficiency of the very first enzyme that we have seen in in the previous slide and that is fructokinase. So the deficiency of fructokinase will lead to accumulation of fructose in the blood and so basically fructose is not, a, not metabolized in the cell, it's going to come back into the blood so that will give rise to elevation of fructose in the blood that is called as fructosemia. So elevation of fructose in blood is called as fructosemia. So whenever fructose is elevated in blood, so it is going to appear in urine and that particular condition is called as fructosuria. So fructosemia and fructosuria, these are the two uh, laboratory features that you are going to see in essential fructosuria. Otherwise, so essential fructosuria is simply as it is asymptomatic condition. So essential fructosuria it is basically asymptomatic condition. So asymptomatic means patient will not have any signs and symptoms. It's an asymptomatic condition except patient may have a laboratory sign that is fructosemia and fructosuria. So patient will live, lead normal life majority of time so patient won't be knowing that he has he or she has got a disorder so this is what essentially about essential fructosuria now let's move on to see hereditary fructose intolerance so hereditary fructose intolerance it's a symptomatic condition patient will have signs and symptoms in hereditary fructose intolerance and this disorder as we have seen before it is because of deficiency of aldolase B enzyme. Aldolase B enzyme. And also note that so deficiency of aldolase B is the one which leads to hereditary fructose intolerance because of this. The name of the disorder, other name of this particular disorder is also referred as aldolase B deficiency. This is the another name of a hereditary fructose intolerance. 
or it can be simply called as fructose intolerance because patient won't be able to tolerate fructose that is fruit fruit juice table sugar any fructose containing foods patient will have intolerance to that so that is why this is called as fructose intolerance this is all again sometimes called as fructose one phosphate aldolase deficiency anyway so the most commonly used terminology for this disorder is hereditary fructose intolerance since this is a symptomatic condition so let's move on to see what all the signs and symptoms in this particular disorder so the hereditary fructose intolerance is a symptomatic condition and that's because as you can see in in the as we have seen in the previous uh, slides that fructose is converted to fructose one phosphate that's done by fructokinase and fructose one phosphate is converted to dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glycerol d8 done by aldolase enzyme aldolase b enzyme Note that fructose one phosphate is broken down into glyceraldehyde and dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Later, so we are interested in that phosphate there here. So the phosphate which is there in the fructose one phosphate, it is released in the form of dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Later, you are going to get that phosphate in the metabolism. So if there is a deficiency of aldolase B enzyme. there will be trapping of inorganic phosphate in the form of fructose 1 phosphate so because of this what happens there will be deficiency of inorganic phosphate pool in the cytoplasm all this uh, uh, function basically all the biochemical reactions which needs inorganic phosphate so they will be down so because of this hereditary fructose intolerance becomes a symptomatic condition So now let's move on to see what all the signs and symptoms. Patients with disorder with this disorder will develop nausea and vomiting as soon as basically whenever a uh, fructose or fruit juices are introduced for the first time. Anything that contains fructose, whether it is a table sugar, fruit juice, fruits, so patient won't be tolerating that. So patient will have nausea and vomiting. Patient will have abdominal pain and diarrhea. so because of this what happens so the child uh, infant or a child so the, the normal development do not go on in time so all the developmental milestones that need to go on in time so that will be delayed so there will be growth failure in hereditary fructose intolerance and the over a period of time what happens so the child will develop intolerance and dis distaste for fructose because the patient don't be metabolizing fructose in a proper way so because of the trapping of inorganic phosphate so glycogenolysis which needs inorganic phosphate and gluconeogenesis which also needs atps so because of this what happens so during fasting condition these pa these patients they won't be able to generate glucose from glycogen or won't be able to make glucose from non carbohydrate sources via gluconeogenesis so both glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis both will be down and that will give rise to hypoglycemia under fasting condition so during this time if the repeated uh, fructose intolerance this is going on on repeated consumption of fructose containing thing so there will be trapping of inorganic phosphate overall deficiency of inorganic phosphate pool will be there in the cytoplasm because of that patient will be repeatedly getting into hypoglycemia under fasting condition so that can give rise to convulsions that is seizures and later it can give rise to coma sometimes it can give rise to death so convulsions and coma one of the signs seen in hereditary fructose intolerance coming to the liver damage so patients with hereditary fructose intolerance can have liver damage and it can lead to jaundice so patients will have increased levels of bilirubin uh, bilirubin leading to jaundice so patients uh, can have hepatomegaly and cirrhosis of liver and ultimately it is going to liver uh, failure and also could lead to kidney failure so majority of time the cause of death in hereditary fructose intolerance is believed to be because of liver and kidney failure so these are some of the signs that are seen in hereditary fructose intolerance and this is uh, this disorder is it follows autosomal recessive inheritance pattern and the frequency is 1 in 20000 to 1 in 30000 population 
So, so this this is all about uh, sin cell fructosuria and uh, hereditary fructose intolerance. I hope this video has helped you to recall points related with uh, sin cell fructosuria and hereditary fructose intolerance. Thanks for watching. See you again in my next video.